Hey all, welcome back to SLB Basement Bourbon Bar. My name is Kurt. As you can see, we are not in the cozy confines of the actual Basement Bourbon Bar. And that makes me sad a little bit, but we are up here in my wife's domain. So I gotta be really careful. Right, babe? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we are in the family kitchen and we have to be up here because Today, we're going to discuss our fourth and final segment of how to start your home bar. Some good ideas in starting the home bar. And today, we're discussing ice. Everything to do about ice. Now, as you know, anybody can come up to the kitchen and grab some freezer ice, mix a cocktail, uh, use some freezer ice to just, uh, you know, put it in some whiskey to cool down, some to dilute some whiskey. Anybody can do that, and there's nothing wrong with that. Lord knows I've done that many, many, many times. But if you wanna amp your game up a little bit, I'm gonna give you some ideas and techniques today that'll help you do that without a whole lot of effort, to be quite honest with you. So, before we get started though, I wanna mention one thing. I'm wearing a different shirt, a shirt. I know, you guys got used to the blue one, but today I got a black one. It's got a beautiful logo here that says SLB Drinks. And on the back side, basement bourbon bar, baby. Trenton worked really hard on this. He actually did all the designing. He set it up, and we got a few in. So if you can, let me know what you think about it. He's working on an online store so that you could possibly purchase some in probably a week or so or whatever, but he'll handle that part of it. But if you think you might want to purchase a shirt or something, let us know. See if it's worth our efforts. Leave that as it is. Let's move on to what we have to talk about. Let's talk about some ice. Now, first thing I want to tell you, if you're going to make your own ice at home for cocktails or whiskey, make sure you use a good quality water. Now that could be uh, filtered water. You can buy a couple of jugs of uh, distilled water if you want to, or if you're comfortable enough and your tap water is really good water, Feel free to use that, but make sure you use some good quality water because you have to understand as you're drinking a cocktail or sipping on some whiskey, if your water is not good, that's gonna be diluting into your cocktail. So make sure you use some good quality water. So moving on from there, there's two types of ice. There's either cloudy ice or there's clear ice. That's it. Cloudy ice happens when it, when it freezes super fast and there's some impurities and air pockets uh, that get trapped in there in the freezing process and it makes it cloudy. When we first started the bar action down there, we just had a few bottles and this and that, I actually ordered some of these trays here for whiskey. So they're larger cubes. So keep in mind though, when I, when I use these, these were sufficient, but when I used them, they were definitely cloudy. So now what happens is cloudy ice will dilute faster than clear ice. And plus, let's, let's face it, a chunk of clear ice in a cocktail glass really looks aesthetically pleasing and it just makes a beautiful cocktail too. But there, there is an example there too of the, of the, uh, the cloudy ice uh, will water down faster than the clear ice. So let's get started here first. Let's talk about mixing ice. Mixing ice, what I like to do, what I found was the best for me, is I use these silicone ice trays. And as you can see, they're kind of smaller cubes, maybe inch and a half by inch and a half, or inch and inch, something like that. But the key to this is, for me, is that each and every cube is exactly the same. What I got so sick and tired of was, was buying either a, a bag of ice from the store or something like that. And you had a lot of broken chunks and shards. And so when you're mixing that in your cocktail, there's no way you can mix two cocktails the same way. If you, if you use a, a mixing glass and you stir it 50 times with that kind of ice, you're going to have two different cocktails, even if you spin it the exactly the same amount of, of revolutions. With this, it's going to be the same every time. You're going to get some control with this kind of, uh, with this kind of an ice tray. And I got a little bit, I got a few right here. As you can see, you see that trend pretty good? Yeah. As you can see, they're a little bit cloudy because obviously that's gonna freeze, that's gonna freeze quickly. But regardless of that, it's gonna give you some, some uh, 
control when mixing cocktails. So that's what I use for my mixing ice. Now, let's talk about clear ice. Now there's a term that's used, it's called directional freezing. All right, and it's a method used to help create clear ice. So there's one of a couple of ways that I do it here, and hopefully it might help you out. First, you can buy something like this on Amazon, <clears throat> pardon me, on Amazon or anywhere like that. And what this is, is there's a fill line right about here, and you fill the water up to here. There's molds here, this makes my ice spheres, that's what I use this for. So then when you put it in your container, you're gonna put that in your freezer for about 24 hours, that's it. <clears throat> Excuse me, the biggest key to that is you do not want the water to freeze all the way to the bottom. So when it, when it freezes to the bottom, that's where you're gonna get your impurities and the ice and the, and the uh, air pockets and things we talked about. So if you leave it in there for 24 hours, it's gonna be water down in this area, but yet up in here, it's all gonna be frozen. So with that, you get a, a pretty nice ice sphere. And, and actually these are fairly adequate. So they do a pretty good job. What I love to do though, is I love to hand cut ice. So when you do that, you wanna take a, some form of a uh, Coleman cooler. This is one that's just a small size. You wanna take the lid off. You do not wanna put it in the freezer with the lid on. I usually fill the water you know, way up into this area here. And I leave it in the fridge, I'm sorry, in the freezer anywhere from, I don't know, 24 to 28 hours. And that's something you're gonna to have to figure out with your own freezer and how fast it freezes. But this, the same principle applies with this Coleman as it did with this little handy dandy thing here. The ice will not freeze all the way to the bottom. It's only gonna freeze right in through here. So then you take the ice slab out of the cooler and you come up with something like this. Now this particular slab here is a little bit bigger because I have two coolers. There's one sitting over there. The one's a little bit bigger and then I got this one's a little bit smaller. But this is basically what you get. A real nice chunk of clear ice. And from there, it's, it's really pretty simple to cut. I'm gonna show you real quick right now. Make sure you have some towels here because it's gonna get wet, it's gonna get a little messy. Your hand's gonna get cold, so if you have to, have some form of a glove. But what I like to do is just kind of get a measure of how wide your block of ice you want, and you want to score with a nice, sharp, serrated knife. Just score the top. Then take a little mallet of some sort. I just got a little kitchen mallet here and just give it a few taps. Now, this broke a little improper, but that's no big deal. Cut that part off. Set it to the side for a minute. So then from there, I'm gonna cut a block of ice that I might use in an old fashioned. So I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna score that edge, score the edges real nice and give it a good wrap. That's what I didn't do last time. So, without cutting this whole block, now I have this beautiful block of ice. So, from there, what I like to do is if I have this double rocks glass, obviously it's not quite fitting. So what I do is take a, a nice serrated kitchen knife here, a smaller knife, so I'm gonna, yeah, the height is pretty good on it, I think. So I'm gonna zip off real quick some of the edges here. The bottom's not quite flush, so I'm gonna fix that real quick. There you go. To me, there's nothing like a beautiful, clear block of ice, and it really didn't take much effort at all. In short, I know we got we don't have a whole lot of time. I like to cut each and every one of these for you. You can cut these to whatever size fits your needs. If you have a single rocks glass, 
Trent and I actually cut these a little smaller too for the single rocks glasses if we prefer to have a pour of whiskey over a nice clear chunk of ice. So we'll cut them a little smaller, a little bigger, and then I always hand trim them or hand cut them to fit in whatever appropriate glass that you want to use. That's what we do here. I, I sure hope it was helpful. I tell you what I would love, if any of you have any recommendations or suggestions that you can give me how you do your ice at home, I'd love to hear it. I love to read that stuff. I learned so much from each and every one of you when you give me your recommendations and suggestions. Uh, from there, Trenton will have links in the description for all of the all of the items that we used here tonight, even including this little, you know, sphere box and the ice trays and whatnot. So you can find that in the links below. That's all I have for you today. Hey, next time we're going to be back down in the basement where I'm a little more comfortable at the basement bourbon bar. But until then, as always, we ask you to please drink responsibly. And we'll see you next time right down here with me in a good old basement bourbon bar slash kitchen. See you later. Thank you.